Dr. Anna, the addiction epidemic has been a massive problem worldwide. Rates of alcohol and drug abuse, overdose, and deaths increase from year to year. Unfortunately, the pandemic has made the crisis even worse. Chronic stress, multiple losses, and continual uncertainties led many to seek relief with alcohol and drugs. Common reasons why people use include to feel better, to relax, to have fun, and to fit in with others. Globally. About 275 million people used drugs in 2020. In the U.S., a national survey of 5,000 working adults found that about a third who drank alcohol or abused drugs said they increased usage once the pandemic began. However, these same folks also reported feeling more isolated and had the worst mental health in comparison to those who did not increase use, although they used more. To connect with others and to make themselves feel better, they got the opposite effect. During the pandemic, drug overdoses have also skyrocketed. The U.S. Center for Disease Control, or CDC, estimates that over 93,000 overdose deaths occurred in 2020. This is the highest number ever recorded in a year, and nearly a 30 percent increase from 2019. Common drugs involved in overdose deaths include opioids, especially synthetic opioids like fentanyl, cocaine, and stimulants such as methamphetamine. All these drugs are highly addictive. Moreover, alcohol, even though it is legal, can lead to addiction, impaired thinking, acting out behavior, and liver disease. Let's discuss how addiction develops. Addictive substances. Like alcohol and drugs, act like the brain's natural feel-good chemical. The addictive substance brings a sudden increase in the feel-good sensation, and intoxication happens. This is often referred to as getting high. Here's a depiction of what happens in the brain. On the left side, you see a normal condition. The brain here is filled with red dots as its own natural feel-good chemical. On the right side. The brain is being invaded with an addictive substance represented by gray dots. It is getting overstimulated with sudden euphoria. The brain knows that the infiltration is unnatural, and that overstimulation is dangerous. If more and more substances are continuously pumped into it, the brain will eventually exceed its capacity to cope and die. This is what happens. When people die from drug overdose, so since the brain cannot control the infiltration of the external substance, it can only try to stay alive by cutting down the production of its own natural chemicals. Here is a depiction of that process. The brain on the left is overstimulated with excess substances, so it compensates by making less natural chemical that is shown on the right side with much fewer red dots. When this happens, the person no longer experiences the same high as before, so more alcohol or drugs are needed to get the same effect. This is called tolerance. In time, the person will need to consume more and more of the substance to get the same high. When the person does not use, whether it is due to wanting to quit, running out of money, or being in an institution or jail. The brain senses that the external substance is gone, and that it needs to make more of its own chemicals again. But this does not happen instantly. It takes a while before the body resumes normal production again. Until then, there is not enough of the natural chemicals to keep the person functioning properly. This is called withdrawal. Here is a depiction of that situation. On the right side. The external substance is gone, but the brain does not have enough of its own natural chemicals. The natural chemicals actually do a lot more than just making one feel good. They regulate processes like movement, appetite, thinking, and sleep. So when a person goes into withdrawal, the whole body feels out of whack, and one can experience shaking, nausea, vomiting, pain, anxiety. 
seizures, delirium, and hallucinations. Sometimes the withdrawal gets so bad that a person needs to come under the care of a physician and go through detoxification or detox. Sometimes the withdrawal feels so terrible that one just goes back to using. Then the entire addiction cycle starts again. We now know that continual use of alcohol and drugs damage the body and the brain. Here are PET scans of healthy brains on the left, and those from cocaine, methamphetamine, alcohol, and heroin users on the right. There are a lot less red in the brains of substance users. In PET scans, bright colors of red and orange indicate healthy functioning. When there are a lot of dark colors. It means that many things are not working properly. People with addiction often report having heart, lung, and liver diseases, cancer, stroke, HIV/AIDS, hepatitis B and C, and mental illness, including psychosis. Here is a scan of a healthy brain on the left, and that of a cocaine user on the right. On the lower part, you see a healthy heart on the left. And the deceased heart on the right. Again, the darker colors on the right means that the brain and the heart are not working well. Years of research on alcohol and drug abuse reveal the truth of the destruction they bring. Whatever stage you may be at, whether you are thinking about using, started use, are wanting to quit, tried stopping but relapsed, or are struggling with temptations and cravings. Please remember three words: stop and think. Why stop? Because many people get into serious trouble when they act impulsively. A moment of reactivity can bring a lifetime of regrets. Why think? Because you want to think through the consequences of what you're doing. I have talked with hundreds of folks who abused alcohol and drugs. They're left with chronic physical and mental illnesses. They lost their money, jobs, homes, and families, and many ended up homeless or in jail. That is what addiction brings. Some of these consequences can be lifelong. The truth is that you have hell to pay for a few minutes or even a few hours of pleasure with substances. If addiction has developed, please get into treatment. It is never too late to get help. Ask your doctor or pastor for a referral for alcohol or drug treatment. There is hope. Here is a brain scan of a normal person on the left, that of a meth abuser on the middle, and that of the same drug abuser after 14 months of abstinence. Notice that the red colors come back, and the brain recovered. This person was blessed. Sometimes others are not as lucky. How well the brain recovers depends on what, how long, and how much substances were used. Recovery is also different for each individual. Of course, the sooner one stops using, the faster and greater the likelihood for healing. One can also engage in no-cost programs like Alcoholics Anonymous or AA. AA's 12-step program. Has helped millions around the world, and it has been incorporated by Narcotics Anonymous for drug addictions. As a Christian, I find that the first three steps are foundational for recovery. They involve one, admitting that life has become unmanageable with alcohol and drugs; two, recognizing that only God can save us; and three, surrendering our lives to Him. If you have a substance addiction, I encourage you to take these three steps and get help. It is my prayer that Psalm 91:2 will be your testimony. This I declare about the Lord: He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in Him. And God promises in Psalm 91:14 through 16, "I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name." When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation.